Hey everybody, how you doing? Into Weapons back again with you. Wanted to do a final update uh, video on the Wasser Cutaway Rifle project that I've been working on. Finally got it finished, I have about 15 to 20 hours in it. If you haven't watched the original video, I picked this rifle up in a pretty rough state uh, from a private seller. It was about $450. Uh, after everything is said and done here, I got about you know 10 extra dollars into it, but for me, about $460 total. So for a lot of you, that's pretty weird for a firearm that doesn't actually shoot anything, but it is a really cool example of how an, uh, an AK-47 works, and it's going to be a wall hanger for me, a good conversation starter. And um, as an AK collector, it just it, it, it works for me, definitely. So I think it's very cool. Uh, so I thought I would just do a quick video on kind of what I did here guys and I'll try to make it as quick as possible not drag on like I usually do but uh, real quickly I'll go through the nine things that I really did to it then I'll get you a close up we'll try to break it down um, and then I'll do at the very end of the video some before and after pictures so you can see the side by side comparisons from the original state that I got it in. Uh, so first up, I'll just go over the nine things that I really quickly did. Uh, number one being a safety selector cutout. I did notch out the safety selector here, so when it is in the fire position, you can see the fire control group still working. Previously, you couldn't. It just covered it right up. So did that right away. Uh, after uh, I did that, I kind of broke the whole gun down, disassembled everything, cleaned and oiled it. I gave it a mineral spirits dip, uh, which cleans all those uh, uh, cosmoline spots out of all the cracks and crevices. Then I went back and did a regular cleaning with my you know, solvents and brush and all that good stuff. Then I thoroughly oiled everything down, being that this is going to be hanging on the wall and uh, probably for a very long time, and I don't want it to rust up on me. So again, a very thorough oiling on the entire gun. Uh, at that point then I took the fire control group since it was out there and I did a, a trigger job just to make the trigger uh, a little bit better as uh, if you watch the original video you know the, or the trigger on this thing was just actually horrible, absolutely horrible, the action it was too so after I cleaned everything up and uh, did the trigger job where I polish the eight contact points for the fire control group it's much better, much smoother, it's got a nice crisp five, po uh, five pound trigger pull all the time, the action is much better as well uh, I cleaned everything up. Once I got all that cosmoline and crap out of here, it was a much cleaner action by itself anyway. Uh, once I did that, I, I kind of realized as I was polishing the, the, the contact points that it might be a really cool thing to polish the uh, visible parts on the fire control group. And I'll get you guys a little bit closer view of that when we get into the uh, looking at the gun itself. But uh, against the black of the firearm, you know, on the inside there, the chrome or the polished uh, visible areas of the fire control group really stand out. I thought that was kind of a, a neat look to it. So uh, as we get closer, I'll give you guys a closer look at that. Uh, once I was done with that, I took out the bolt and I removed the firing pin. There is a, a cutout in the bolt itself that shows you the firing pin, so I uh, polished that visible part of the firing pin so it stood out again against the bolt a little bit better. I also polished the extractor, and there is a cutout right here in the receiver where you can see the extractor, so that helps it again just stand out a little bit better. Um, at that point then I did take it and file down the firing pin so it does not protrude out and ever have a chance of hitting a primer if for some reason you know it got in contact with a primer. There is actually three points and I'll mention that right now of how this gun is inoperable. They do have uh, a hole drilled right through the barrel right about here. They put a pin in and re-welded it. Uh, what that does is not allow a round to fully seat in the chamber. It sticks out of the chamber probably a good inch, inch and a half. Uh, so you can't fully see it around in there. They also have the magazine here. It, the magazine is, is rendered inoperable. They have a couple have a, a couple tabs that are inserted in here, which doesn't allow the uh, rounds to go in very easily. I really had to get them in difficult. It was difficult to get them in there, but it won't strip off around as, as well. Uh, the third thing is uh, the firing pin that I made there. I, I uh, you know filed that down so it will never have the chance of hitting a primer and you know striking off a, a round or anything like that. So completely inoperable gun. Does have a serial number though. It is considered a firearm in the U.S. government's eyes. You do have to have a background check if you buy, purchase it from a retailer or you know a, an FFL something like that. Uh, after that, I took the china marker and I did a markings on the um, where the gun had its markings, its identification numbers, all that good stuff. There's some of the magazines as well. I have a specific video out there on how I did that. It was kind of a new process to me, but just taking a, a like a wax china marker and then going over that, heating it up, and then wiping off the remainder, making those markings jump out a little bit. And uh, I'll show you that as we do the close up on that. 
Uh, then I finished the wood, cleaned up the cutouts, that kind of thing. The wood was in horrible rough shape. The cutouts were very rough. Uh, you can tell it wasn't something that they, you know, spent a lot of time making. This was really a training tool. Uh, they didn't need to have it look pretty. It was just really everyone passed it around the classroom probably, you know, had their fun with it and uh, learned how an AK works. So uh, the stock was really beat up. It had a couple cracks, which it still does. It stands out a little bit. Uh, but you can tell it was handled a lot. Um, so I cleaned that all up and actually I'll give you kind of my process of what I did to the stock itself. I think I have it written down here. Um, yeah, I sanded it with 120 and then to 320 uh, grit sandpaper. I used Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner. I did one coat of Minwax red mahogany number 225 stain which turned out really really nice. I, maybe if I go back I might have tried two, two uh, coats of the stain but I think it, this, the color is pretty, pretty good itself. Um, then I did three coats Minwax Wipe On Poly just to give it a nice good fill-in coat and then two coats of the Minwax Spray Poly to give it a nice hard finish and that kind of that, uh, that shiny luster to it. So that kind of took care of the wood. That was a good chunk of time invested in that. Um, the uh, last thing I did was just kind of put everything back together and then replace the, uh, you know, the missing parts which included the uh, cleaning rod up here in the front. We have the uh, bayonet, which the uh, lug itself doesn't have any ears on it, so it, I kind of have to use the, the claw of the bayonet to kind of hold itself in place, which isn't ideal, but it does hold itself, and again, being a wall hanger, that's not that big of a deal, just for looks anyway. Um, I have the cleaning kit installed on the back of the, the gun here. It didn't originally come with one. That came out of a Polish kit I got from some retailer at a kit or something like that. Uh, the sling itself, and uh, then the fake ammo what I got, which I got on eBay. I didn't really have the uh, equipment to make the, the rounds of NERP myself, so I figured that would be the easiest route to go. Uh, so to give you a close-up before we break down the gun, and give you a little bit of some of the internals, as you can see you got the bayonet up, bayonet up in the front here. We have the cutouts for the barrel. We have the cutouts for the gas system, and I'll kind of Move that back and forth here a little bit. You can see in the front sight or the front gas block, it's that piston moving back and forth, and uh, the action is still a little bit tight, but it it does work. You know, it's not the best. I didn't want to spend a bazillion hours trying to get this thing working real pretty. I mean, it's obviously not going to be used, so um, as long as it works a little bit, that's good enough for me. And uh, moving forward, you have the refinished handguards, the cut in the upper handguard, which doesn't really show a whole lot except for the gas tube. Uh, the cut in the lower handguard, which again doesn't show you a whole lot except for the barrel. And then the uh, cut towards the bottom in the front there, which shows you the cleaning rod going through. Really nothing spectacular. Uh, you have the rear sight block here, which has got the cut out there showing the gas piston moving back and forth. And then this cut out here, which you know, it just kind of shows you how the... The gas piston sits in there, I guess, more or less. Uh, you have, let's see if I can do this here as easily here. We have uh, the cutout here and the receiver, which does show you the extractor. If you can see that, just that little shiny thing in, the, in there, that's the extractor I polished. Uh, again, that just made it stand out a little bit more. Uh, it's still very difficult to see, but uh, you can't see that. We'll get a little bit closer view when we break the gun down. Uh, we have the cutout here uh, in the bolt carrier that shows the recoil spring. Uh, we have the cutouts in the receiver towards the uh, um, middle of the gun here where you can see the fire control group. There's the hammer. You got, uh, you know, the sear, disconnect, all that stuff down here. Uh, you have your safety selector, which in the safe position still kind of shows you everything. And then if you scroll it down, you can see that cutout again allows you still to see the fire control group. Uh, and again, that, that polished visible areas of that fire control group, I think, stand out a little bit better than, you know, originally what it was. It, uh wouldn't show up as well against that black if it was black. So, I don't know, let me know what you guys think of that. I thought that was kind of a neat um, neat way of doing it. Uh, other than that, you have the cutouts in the dust cover here, uh, which show you the recoil spring. You have uh, the cutout here, which kind of shows you, again, the part of the fire control group, and I guess where the pistol grip kind of comes in and sits. Uh, and then in the back where the stock comes in, uh, you have the cutouts in the stock where the... Um, it's mounted there, and then the cutout towards the back where the pad is held in, where the cleaning kit is. I'm going to replace that cleaning kit, uh, and then how the sling mount is held in. Replace that sling mount. The stock, I think, again, turned out really, really nice. Let me know what you guys think on that. That's that red mahogany number 225. I wanted to get, you know, some sort of red tint to it, and it turned out all right. I don't know if the gun stock, how that would have come out, the Minwax gun stock, but... Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It looks really nice for at least a wall hanger. 
And then on this side, uh, there really isn't much to, to talk about. You have the, direct, uh, the grip here, which I pulled out of my uh, Draco uh, bag. I replaced all the parts of my Draco, and this was the Romanian Draco grip out of there. That matches the Bakelite grip of the bayonet real well. Uh, you have the side scope mount there, and then uh, the markings, again, that I mentioned, uh, with the serial number. Let's see if I can get a good view of it here for you guys lighting there and uh, that white china marker again made it stand out just a little bit better than what originally was and I'm not going to try to read that off it's all backwards I'm looking at it in the monitor here uh, the finished wood and then all the way up through the front there the bayonet kind of slipped off on me I'll try to show you the bayonet here again it has the bayonet lug but almost the, it's like the ears were kind of ground off it which kind of sucks it doesn't hold the bayonet like it should which be nice if it did but the claws on the bayonet seem to hold it in place as, as well as it needs to be so uh, so here's the magazine again the magazine here has markings on it it says Romania on there yeah Romania and I use the China marker to make that stein out a little bit more got the fake ammo in there so you can kind of see how that goes back and forth and it is uh, you know they were PPU ammo I believe 760 by 39 this was live ammo and he removed the uh, stuff out of there including the primer so it's completely inert and uh, I got six rounds in there and not really much else to say about that I guess now uh, we can show you the action and the fire control group in option in action here Let's pull it back it's got a pretty good trigger now consistent five pounds you can see everything working in there hopefully And then uh, try to give you a shot up here of maybe the gas stuff working. You can see all that. So that's kind of neat. Gives you a view of all that good stuff. What we'll do is we'll break it down a little bit and I'll try to give you a closer view of some of the cutouts on the inside. Pop this off. Pop this out. Not that there's anything on there to show you. Uh, we'll remove the bolt carrier and uh, remove the bolt. We'll start with the bolt carrier itself. It has that cutout here and here so you can see both those areas of the bolt when it's in there and I think that's it for the bolt carrier. Oh no, and the bolt carrier has uh, this cutout as well which shows you how the, the gas piston is you know um, screwed in there and then welded in place or spot welded whatever they do. Uh, let's see the bolt itself the pin still does freely move back and forth and again I mentioned that the bolt carrier or the bolt itself has the cutout in there so you can see the firing pin and I uh, polished the visible part of that firing pin so you can see that shiny spot there right there is that firing pin and the extractor I didn't really do a whole lot of polishing on it as much as I really should have but I did polish that a little bit as you can see there to make it stand out just a little bit more and uh, that's about it. Again, I uh, filed down the front of that. I don't know if you guys are going to make that out, but I filed down the front of that firing pin so it doesn't protrude out of there and never have the chance of striking a primer. If anyone ever wanted, if I ever sold this and they said I wanted a firing pin there with that in there, they could just easily replace that. That's not too difficult. Uh, let's see, what else? I don't think I'm going to break it down much more, but I'll give you a view of you know the, the trigger job in there. And I'm going to do a video here in the near future of how I do... Uh, the trigger jobs of my AKs. I got eight contact points in the fire control group that I polish, which makes it uh, you know, just a little bit more crisp of a trigger pull. I generally don't mess around with the length of pull adjustments that some people do, but I, it's, I can show you how to do it. Um, the trigger jobs are something that's kind of new to me. I've done two or three now and feel pretty comfortable doing them. It definitely helps the triggers. It's not difficult to do if you have a Dremel tool. So again, I'll throw together a tutorial maybe if you guys are interested in seeing how I do some of that stuff. but. Other than that, that uh, is pretty much it, guys. I can't think of much else to show you on this. Um, we did kind of the overview of what I did. We gave you an overview of the firearm. Uh, we did the breakdown, showed you kind of the pieces and parts. What I'll do at the very end here before I uh, cut off onto the end of the video is throw in the before and after pictures so you guys can kind of compare the original state to what it is now. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really enjoyed putting the project together. Um, I hope it's going to look nice on the wall and uh, you know give a nice touch to my office. So that'll be a pretty cool thing to look forward to. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I really appreciate watching. And until next time, take her easy.